My name is Sam. I'm the Partnerships and Communications Manager at Fairy God Boss. And Fairy God Boss is the largest career community for women. Our mission is to improve the workplace for women by increasing transparency. And we offer a variety of free resources like anonymous company reviews, job listings, articles, virtual recruiting events, and more to help women succeed in their careers. Before we get started, we will be having a Q&A at the end of this webinar. You'll find that Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen again. Feel free to leave questions there as yourself or anonymously. We'll be getting to as many as possible at the end of the webinar. You can also use the chat if you have any questions or comments throughout. Um, interact with other people who are in the screen right now. Uh, finally, we will be sending out a recording of this in an email following the webinar later today. So if you miss anything or you want to rewatch it at any time, you'll have the ability to do so. Here with me today is Jill L. Ferguson and Danny Brooks. Jill is the founder and CEO of Women's Wellness Weekends and moderator of not one, but two Fairy God Boss groups, Women's Wellness and Creating the Freelance Career. She's an award-winning author of 10 books and counting, an artist, journalist, book, and business coach and entrepreneur. She's currently researching and writing a book called Into the Knowing, which is all about using intuition to make our best decisions. Danny is a best-selling author, nutritional therapist, clinical herbalist, professional speaker, and founder of Good Decisions Incorporated. Thank you both for being here today. I leave it to you. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful introduction too. Yes. Um, so we're here to talk about intuition today, Danny. Yes, I'm and so excited. All of these fabulous people that have joined us. Um, what do you... Oh, slide is not open. So wait a minute. What? There we go. What do you think intuition is? Well, I love uh, Deepak Chopra's um, take on intuition, where he says that intuition is a form of intelligence that lies beyond the thinking mind. And so to me, that describes it because it's like an inner knowing. It's like, it's something that we feel in the body, something that's not like separate from the thinking mind, but something that we just kind of feel and know. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's a deep knowing that compels us to action, yeah. usually, mm -hmm. especially if we pay attention to it. If, yeah, if we pay attention to <laughs> yeah. it. That's when it's awesome. Yeah. It, it's a information flowing to us that we can feel in our bodies usually, but we may not be able to see or hear, mm -hmm. right? And as you said, it's a knowing, but it's not knowing how you know, yeah. it's just knowing. Yeah, that, uh, that one really resonates with me. And then it's understanding our body's energies and the shifts in our energies and what those shifts may mean. Mm -hmm. Right. And as you said, it's yep. a form of intelligence that lies beyond the rational mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. So where do you find your intuition? Ooh, where do you feel it? Oh, yeah. well, for me, I feel it in my whole body. It's, and it's not, it's very distinct between when I have this, Ooh, should I do that? Should I not do that? It's all kind of like located in my head, right? If, if I'm feeling there's like it's chaos or this compulsion, I know that that's not my intuition. When I feel my intuition is when I quiet myself and I feel it in my whole body, but it's kind of like an experience more so than something that just kind of happens to me. It's like, it's like that knowing. Yeah. Okay. And you? Um, for me, part of my intuition comes when my frontal lobe kind of buzzes, like if I ask a question and I want an answer to know if, you know, is it this or is it that, or should I do this or should I do that, my frontal lobe actually feels like it vibrates, um, which is really interesting for me to experience and be like, oh, okay, well, if it's not vibrating, then the answer is no. Mm -hmm. um, but for other people, the hairs may stand up on their arms or they may get a really uncomfortable feeling, like especially if you get an intu into an intuitive situation where maybe you're walking down the street and something feels off to you, mm -hmm. or like if any of you um, that are listening to us watched the YouTube or the um, Instagram takeover that I did two days ago with Fairy God Boss, I talked about how my dog Nacho, uh, we walked down a sidewalk and he did not like the energy of a person that was also walking down the sidewalk and he rerouted us down an alley to get away from the person. So for him, it was probably an uncomfortable feeling that I wasn't sensing personally, but that he was. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we get a flash, like this mental image that comes to us or this idea or feeling that we don't know where it comes from. Um, it may be a physical sensation in our gut. So 
sometimes we just feel, I, I have a colleague that really gets strong sensations in her gut area and, you know, gets this gut instinct reaction of, yes, this is a yes or no, this is a no. Mm -hmm. um, but the almost always when we feel our intuition, it is somewhere in our body, not in our thinking mind. Yeah. Right. And, and I would say for different people, it might vary too, because Jill is a very strong intuit. So I would say for what you're experiencing, you're really clear to it where, you know, I've just been kind of playing around it for the last couple of years. So my spider senses are might be a little bit lower. So while you get that frontal lobe lighting up, I kind of receive it as a knowing, but I think it's different for everybody. Well, and I think there's also different kinds of intuition where we may have intuition about like a world event or something that's coming um, that's bigger than us. And then other times we may get intuition about something very specific to us that's uh, like a smaller, more personal thing. And those two kinds of intuition may come to us in our bodies in different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so there's kind of like this macro intuition and a micro intuition, if you will, let's call it. Mm -hmm. Or even the little voice that says, hey, don't forget your keys. Don't forget your keys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or when you walk out the door, oh, you just, you just forgot, forgot your keys. Your keys. <laughs> Um, so where does this whole spidey sense come from? What do you think? Oh my goodness. Well, I think we could go to, to, to many different areas on this one. For me, um, I, I think that it comes from something that's outside of us. Something that is, I think there, it's an energy. I think it is that inner knowing or that, that, um, something that is that intelligence that we tap into. So that's kind of my belief. It's, yeah, yeah I, I like to call it all that is. Some people call it God. Some people call it energy. A lot of people mm -hmm. call it different things. But yeah, for me, it's kind of like that intelligence, that knowing. Okay. Yeah. So when we talk about intuition, one of the things about intuition is that we can talk about it from many different facets. We can talk about it from scientific, um, yeah. from kind of a scientific lens or a scientific research point of view. We can talk about it from a more religious point of view um, and almost talk about it from almost any religion's point of view. Yeah. Um, and then we can also talk about it kind of as a universal energy point of view. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to delve into each of those just a little bit. Um, with physics, um, we learn in basic physics, right, that everything is made up of matter and all matter is made up of energy, right? It's kind of physics 101. Yep. Um, We're all vibrational beings. Ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and the amount of energy that flows towards us at every moment of the day is immeasurable. And the amount of energy that we're putting forth is also somewhat Im immeasurable. Um, and I would argue that also that the amount of energy that comes out of all of us is profound, mm -hmm. even if we're not feeling so Wonder Woman-esque at the moment. Yeah. And I think a lot of us can sense that. You know, if you meet somebody that you really like right off the bat, you just feel drawn to them, or there's somebody that maybe you're just like, ooh, ooh, you know, you, we can pick up on that energy. So there's different ways of looking at that energy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nikola Tesla, who was arguably one of the most... Um, recognizable names as inventors and scientists go, said, my brain is only the receiver in the universe, and there's a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. And in his mind, that core was kind of this universal energy idea, and that that's where all intu intuition and ideas and creativity came from. Um, in, if we look at, from a religious standpoint, for um, in Buddhism and Hinduism, for example, um, they believe that there is only one energy in the universe and that every single thing in the universe vibrates with that energy. So every living matter, every plant, every animal, every human mm -hmm. vibrates with an energy that is oftentimes referred to as chi or prana or omnipresence or God. <laughs> that, that's Danny's favorite form of, <laughs> of where intuition comes from. <laughs> um, and one interesting little tidbit about this whole universal energy idea is that researchers at Princeton University in 1998 
um, started a project which they call the Global Consciousness Project. And it's a little bit controversial, um, I'll admit that, but I find the whole project very fascinating because what they've decided to do is for the project is to monitor um, a geographically distributed network of computers, hardware, that generates random numbers. And um, you may think like, what on earth does this have to do with intuition? But they have these random number generators all over the world. And they found that the random number generators become not so random and all tend to sync up when there's a world event that happens that um, makes everyone's energy head a certain direction. So for example, during the death of Princess Di and its aftermath, during 9-11, um, um, and even during major world sporting events, like the World Cup and things, um, they've noticed that the numbers generated don't become random anymore and it all kind of merges into one. Um, and in their minds, in Dr. Roger Nelson's mind at Princeton and his um, team of researchers, they all believe that when things happen um, in a simultaneous fashion to a large group of people, that all of the energies tend to co converge, if you will, sync up, sync up, and that this is an example of this universal energy or global conscious energy um, that is part of where uh, we get also get our intuitive powers from. Um, the field in which we dip. Yes. <laughs> um, and then from a biological standpoint, we are all built with an energy system. Our central nervous system is an energy system. Um, and, uh, and this energy system is an electrical system, right? Yeah. You know, yep. Filled with electricity and we have a neural network. But the thing that may surprise some people, um, and I'm going to ask Danny to mention this or talk about this just a little bit, um, is the fact that the majority of our neural network is found, we may think it's in our brain, but it's actually not. It's in our gut system. And this is newer research that they've realized um, is that we have this gut intelligence or gut energy. Yeah. And it's really interesting because, you know, when we look at um, uh, our thinking minds and how we, um, how we um, process things, uh, serotonin is one of the, the biggest neurotransmitters in the brain. And what they're finding is that serotonin is also produced abundantly in the gut. And so what that means is that as this electrical impulse that helps us to think and be cognitive and make decisions, um, it's not just something that we can tap into in the head, we can actually rely on our gut as well. It's um, become known as actually the second brain, the gut has been, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, the researchers at Caltech, if you're looking for the science behind this, uh, have reported that 90% of the body's serotonin is actually produced in the digestive tract. Yeah. So that, that's the science behind what we're saying. Yeah, you have a thinking gut, right? You can trust that, it's pretty cool. Um, the other thing that people may not realize is that the energy fields in your body, there's actually three of them that are in and out of the body. And this is cool. They've actually studied this. So we, we, this is researched and solid stuff. Um, the first energy field, which is within two to three inches of your body, so like right around here around you and mm -hmm. your body itself, is called your etheric energy field. And it transfers energy from the universal energy from out of you through your chakras. Um, you have seven chakras in your body. Um, and through the chakras and the organs and the glands. So any of you that have ever done like acupuncture or anything like that, that's the manipulation or the freeing and clearing of the energy between those energy fields in the um, etheric energy field. Mm -hmm. Um, the second energy field is called the astral body, and it is our emotional and our electromagnetic field. Um, it's also referred to as our aura. So if you're familiar with the word aura, that's, this is that um, energy field. It runs at a very, very high frequency. It tends to be mobile, meaning it kind of changes its shapes, colors, etc. And it also provides us with our gut feelings and our hunches, you know, mm -hmm. that old phrase, the women's intuition, right? Yeah, and yeah. follow your gut instinct. Yeah, yeah. And that's where this comes yeah. from. And it tends to align very much with our emotional states. Um, 
The third energy field is called our mental body. And it's where our highest source of universal energy comes and it runs at the highest frequency of all of the energies. And it's actually located right here where your third eye is um, and that, you know, is in Buddhism and Hinduism. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so those are the energy fields. This is all the sources of where uh, researchers believe that intuition comes from. And I think it probably doesn't just come from one of these. It probably comes from a collection of all of it. Well, and the beautiful thing about this is, you know, every, there's so many different beliefs. And so if you're looking to tap into your intuition, but you don't really want to go the Buddhist route, but you're not really wanting to go the scientific route, you might be able to find something in between that resonates with you that enables you to tap into your intuition from a place that really seems true to you because that's yeah. what intuition is is that's no, it's that knowing that oh that feels true to me mm -hmm. yeah and it and it may be you know if you don't believe in any of these and maybe you're you're a, come from a strong christian faith or something and you may you may believe that your intuition is god telling you things yeah yeah um you know that mm -hmm. fits within this system also yeah is god mm -hmm. or the holy spirit telling yeah. you something yeah um so let's do a little exercise here and then we'll we'll figure out how this applies to intuition cool i love this one <laughs> um i taught this to danny yesterday yeah, actually it. it was it's a awesome. lot of fun so everybody out there um whether you're by yourself or if you have a, a partner here like you know that's sitting next to you um hold your hand like this or like the okay sign that's okay too um, no pun intended, okay. but hold your hand up in a circle so that your thumb is either hitting your index finger or your middle finger. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to think as much as you can about love. Just let your heart fill with love. Think about your pets. Think about your children. Think about your loved ones. Mm. Uh, just fill your whole being. Take a few deep breaths. Oh, I love you, Joe. Oh, thank you, Danny. Oh. I love you too. Oh. Now, mm. either where your partner is, keep that love space, or to your own hand if you're here, stick your fingers in between, keep going, love, 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 and see how easy it is to push your fingers apart with your two fingers in the middle. Oh, it's really hard. It, yeah, it's really hard. It's very difficult. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, now. Remove your fingers from your, okay. <laughs> and now I, what I want you to do is think about things you hate. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the traffic, maybe it's the snow in your city if you're in New York and you're not liking the snow. Maybe it's the current political situation all over the world. Maybe it's it, liver. Maybe it's liver, yeah. <laughs> Broccoli, it could be anything. Um, think mm -hmm. about the things that you hate and then Stick your fingers back in here, hold hate in your heart, and do it again. Oh, mine comes up, it's so easy. Why do you think that is? What are we doing? I don't know. <laughs> I think, well, for me, it feels, wow, that's a good, I don't, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we did by thinking about love and keeping love inside of us and, or keeping hate inside of us, mm -hmm. Those two things have very different vibrational frequencies and different energy. And love actually has been proven to have the highest energy frequency and the strongest energy frequency mm -hmm. of anything in the world. Yeah. Um, so when we think about love, love is more unbreakable um, and it has a more positive effect on our minds, our bodies, our emotions than hate does hate tends to deteriorate. That's right. And they've actually done studies. They've done these really cool studies that show that certain emotions um, like love or hate put out different chemicals into our body. And when we feel the higher vibrational emotions like love, they're very healing. They're, they're very healthy for us to feel. But what they found is that when we experience those low energy emotions like anger and hate, those chemicals actually damage our bodies and do weaken us. So yeah. this is a really great example of that. That's awesome. And, and as that applies to intuition, and we'll get a little further into that in a second also, but as that applies to intuition is that the more that we stay in this higher vibrational love part, the easier it is to hear information here, if you will, that way, yeah, um, receive. information to yeah. receive information mm -hmm. that's coming to us from around the universe. Good stuff. Um, so let's talk about your intuition. 
one of the beauties of it is that it's always, always, always there with you, regardless of where you are and what you're doing. Yep. You can't leave it at home with your keys. It's just like, nope, can't leave it in your car. No. Yep. Um, and, but the thing is, is that sometimes we don't listen to it or want to listen to it. So that's why we don't notice that it's with us. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that it's always working for us and for our um, highest good. It's never going to lead us into danger or lead us astray if we tap into it and we listen to it and take action. Yep. Um, the other thing is, is the more familiar we become with it, like you said earlier, that you have been listening, starting to really tune into your intuition over the last couple of years, the mm -hmm. more we do that, the stronger it actually gets and the easier it is to hear. And you trust it more. Yeah. 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 And the last thing is, is that the, um, ha your intuition helps you find your truth and what matters to you. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think this is really important because so often um, we'll navigate the world based upon what other people think. And, um, you know, whether um, it is, you know, gee, should I get this job or should I hire this employee or God, what do I think? Should I date this guy? We rely on things that are outside of us to tell us maybe what we should do or where we should go. And um, especially with intuitive eating, that's something that we're going to be going into in a few minutes. Oftentimes we'll rely on what other people are doing. And when we stop doing that and we can um, tap into our own inner guidance, our intuition, it can help us discover our own truth and our own authenticity. And we can make our own decisions based upon what matters to us. And this is really important because then we get to express who we are from our own authentic perspective. So I really love the idea of, of, of your intuition really bringing you back to yourself and, and, and what you really want for yourself and for your life. I think you have a really great example of that because Danny has had a business, a uh, physical business mm -hmm. for 24 years, 25 years, 25 years. 26 now. Okay. Yeah. So she's a, she's owned a wellness center um, mm -hmm. for in outside of Seattle mm -hmm. for 26 years, almost 26 years. Yeah. Um, and this last year she's really had to ask herself very hard questions, mm -hmm. right? Because part of your identity has been wrapped up in owning that wellness center. But you've asked yourself intuitively, like, do I really want to keep doing this business or do I want to sell it and do something else? Yes. And my intuition has been calling me to teach. And so, and it's really interesting because when I don't listen to my intuition, I struggle. Oh, should I sell the company? Should I not sell the company? I've had it for 25 years. It's given me all of these beautiful things. And my rational mind starts, you know, getting in there, right? And I start to feel the chaos and the compulsion of, should I sell the business? Should I not sell the business? Oh, there goes my security. What am I going to do? Ah! So that's really a great example of what intuition is not. But when I sit and I calm myself down and I really kind of tap into, you know, okay, what is really right for me? And I ask the question, the question comes and it comes so clear, like a knowing like I've never known before that I am being called to do something else. And when I um, didn't follow the intention and I, str I struggled, but when I do follow the intention, it's easy. It's like there's an ease and a flow to it. Yeah. And yeah. we have to congratulate her because at the end of last year, she sold the business. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, so intuitive eating is one of your areas of expertise. So. Yes. Yeah. And so, so what is intuitive eating? So, you know, we've talked a lot about, oh no, sleep right. You're right. We're right in here. So <laughs> we've talked a lot about how um, intuitive eating is, um, it's, it's, or intuition is in the body, it's not in the mind. And so when it comes to emotional eating, um, oftentimes we'll, we'll eat either because we need to feed the physical body or we'll eat because we're feeding our emotions. And the being able to discern the difference between feeding the physical body and the emotions is really, really important because when you're feeding your emotions, there's that chaos and that compulsion that I was just talking about. Oh, you, may, you might come home after a, a rough day at the office and, you know, the car broke down or something happened and dinner's not on the table and all of a sudden you're just like, ah, give me a glass of wine or give me some food or give me something. And you ask the question, well, am I hungry? 
And if the answer is no, yet you feel compelled to eat anyway, it's an opportunity to ask the question, well, what is it that I'm really trying to feed here? What is it that I'm, I'm really wanting? And it might be to avoid the work day that you just had, or maybe you come home and you're bored and there's just nothing to do. And so you're looking for something to do and you eat out of boredom. Well, that's a sign that, that is a really great indicator that you might be lacking excitement in your life. And so I really love the, when you ask the question, am I hungry? And of course this requires you to kind of calm down, take a deep breath, and then kind of check in with your physical body, right? Because there's the calmness of the physical body versus the chaos of the head. And if the answer is no, asking the question, well, what is it that I really want? And then you can discover what you really hunger for in life. It can become the gateway. So if you're eating because maybe everybody else is eating and you want to feel connected to people, then you're eating because you want that love and connection. And that's something that we, his intuition is popping up. There's something going on. Um, and so if you're wanting to love and connect with people, it's an indicator that, oh, maybe there's a different way I can do that. Maybe I can love and connect with people outside of food by maybe getting together and having more conversations and asking more about what's going on in their life and maybe giving, giving them a hug. Or maybe I'm eating because I want to avoid my life, right? I'm having... I'm not happy in my job or something like that. And so you're eating to avoid dealing with the situation. When you're conscious and you tap into your intuition and when it comes to food and you find that you're not hungry, you're not, your physical body is not calling for food. It's beautiful because then you get to discover what you really hunger for in life. And when you do this, eating becomes really simple, right? Because then all of a sudden it's you eat because the physical body is hungry. And then as you're eating, you're paying attention to what you're eating. And then if you're listening, your body will tell you, wow, that was really good, but now I've had enough. And um, it's just really a beautiful, beautiful thing that will um, help you um, develop a relationship with yourself and your physical body. Well, you can actually ask your body what it wants to eat too, not just, yeah. 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 And this is where it gets kind of tricky because, you know, you might tune in and do what we call the hunger check. Am I hungry? Right. And your body might say, oh yeah, I'm hungry. And you'll feel your stomach might be gurgling, right? You might feel a little lightheaded. Those are the signs of physical hunger. And so, you know, yes, I'm hungry. But then all of a sudden, the mind might kick in a little bit and go, um, yeah, oh, let's go get a bacon cheeseburger with some French fries and maybe a couple of beers, right? Well, all of a sudden, no, that's not hunger, and that might not be what your body's calling for. And the secret is to identify, is it chaotic and is it compulsive? Because if all of a sudden you go, wait, 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 bacon, cheeseburger, French fries, ooh, that feels like my thinking mind. Is that really congruent with who I want to be and, and with what I want for myself? And you take a couple of deep breaths and you check back in with your body, you find, oh yeah, maybe that chicken salad might be better for lunch. Um, or, or there are times where your body actually needs something in a red meat maybe, or some, some grease or salt or whatever that's in the French yeah. fries. And you know, you, you've been known to order a plate of French fries and eat two of them oh, and be done yeah. because that's all you need. Yes. And it's, it, it's so amazing when you eat intuitively and you're paying attention to the food and how it came to you and what had to happen to bring that food to you. And you're in that state of gratitude and you're eating it and you're enjoying it. That's intuitive eating is like, that's where the most joy from food can be found. You find that you'll have a couple of bites of those French fries or a couple of bites of that chocolate chip cookie. And you'll just go, Oh my gosh, that was so good. And your body will tell you, Wow, that was great, but now it's now it's time to stop. That's enough. So you don't eat as much. So intuitive eating isn't about depriving yourself from no. things. It's about listening to your body and what it needs at the time and yeah. um, giving it what it needs in the quantity that it needs, which may be very small. Yes. It's not about guilt or shame or judging foods as, you know, being good or bad or right or wrong. It is just really honoring your body. Yeah. 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 Um, so sometimes we have stumbling blocks to hearing our intuition. Like we said, it's always with us and it's always on, but we don't always hear it. 
Um, and sometimes it's because we have too much clutter going on in our heads or our lives, right? And you think like your whole mind and life needs a Marie Kondo overhaul. Yeah, or go, 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 gotta go, 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 do, 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 right? That false sense of urgency that I don't have time, yeah. I don't have time. Yeah. yeah. You just hit our second bullet point of not taking the time Talk to listen. listen. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. Nice. Yep. Yep. Um, sometimes our stumbling block is that we listen too much to others, mm -hmm. right? And um, and I can give you a little example of that. Um, in I was in a first marriage that um, ended up there was some mental illness involved in the marriage and. Um, it really became a struggle because I was feeling like I would, I couldn't stay in the relationship anymore. Um, but everyone around me, you know, family members were like, no, we don't believe in divorce and you need to stay and you need to stay. And my intuition kept saying, you need to get out and take care of yourself because this has become toxic. And my body started listening to my intuition because every time my rings were on, my wedding ring and my engagement ring, within 20 minutes of them being on my finger, I would develop a rash. Mm -hmm. And that went on for a few years before I finally decided, no, 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 this is really getting bad and I'm feeling so closed off energy-wise and stifled that I needed to listen to my intuition for my own health and well-being. And, you know, sometimes we just have to do that and block out the others mm -hmm. and know that they, they're they trying to have our best interests at heart, but we really need to know for ourselves what's best for us. Yeah. And I'll bet a lot of the listeners will really be able to resonate with that. There, I mean, I'm sure there are times where, where you've had your intuition telling you something and you didn't listen, and then you stayed in a certain situation longer than maybe that you really wanted to. I think mm -hmm. that's really common for people yeah. to experience. We do that with jobs too, yeah. right? We oh, stay in, mm -hmm. I, I'm reading all the fairy god boss um, posts and stuff, I, the number of posts that are there, like I, I'm in a toxic work environment or my boss is toxic and what do I do right we 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 solicit others advice but yeah. we really need to ask ourselves what's best for us um, that also ties to the there's too much tension sometimes mm -hmm. in our lives um, we may be tied to past beliefs like I said in my household my growing up it was we don't believe in divorce so that was a past belief I had to get past yeah um, sometimes we let our intelligence and our logic override us and oh, I oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> And um, I had a situation in like 2014 where I had decided that I was going to pay off a property, a mortgage on a property. And my logic was telling me to wire the money. And my intuition kept saying, send a check, send a check, send a check. And I kept thinking, I have all these problems with our post office and with the mail delivery and mail being stolen. And that just seemed like crazy to send a check. That's anti-logic and intelligence. Um, so I went ahead and overruled my intuition and I did the wire transfer and the wire transfer didn't make it because the um, bank ended up putting in an extra number and I ended up with late fees and all this extra interest and all this stuff because I missed a payment on the mortgage that I didn't actually miss and it just ended up being a disaster and it and in the long run, I had to write a check mm -hmm. <laughs> and send it to them. And I could have avoided all of that by listening to my intuition in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, we also get in habits of if we do things one way in the past, we want to do it the same way again. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not always to our benefit. No, and, and this is a really interesting one because our, our brains are hardwired to keep us on track to old um, habits and patterns. And so when you decide that you want to make a change, maybe you want to end a relationship or maybe you want to leave a, your, your job or, or your company or you want to eat intuitively, um, the, the thinking mind will just put you right back on autopilot and it'll follow the same habits and patterns and behaviors of the past. So I think one of the biggest things with intuitive eating or using your intuition is to quiet the mind and allow yourself to receive that information and just be conscious of what you're doing, especially in the beginning so that you can override that system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing is, is that sometimes we really, really, really want our intuition to tell us something. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, 
impose that instead of listening to what our intuition is really telling yeah. us. No, you don't want to sell your business. That's security. You've had it for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> so you know nothing about that. No, right? no, I know nothing about that. And, yeah. and the other times is sometimes we, want, we really want an answer to something and we really try to force the answer to coming instead of waiting for the perfect timing, the universal timing for that answer to come to yeah. us and the perfect timing for things to happen. Yeah. And, and you know what, I do this, I, I, I've found that my businesses thrive much, much better if I listen to my intuition and I wait for a lot of things to come to me mm -hmm. and the, the interconnection um, and the serendipitous kinds of things to happen as opposed to like, okay, I'm following somebody else's marketing plan for me and all this other stuff and they usually fall very, very flat. Yeah, and, and another really good example of that is for, for everyone out there that is hiring employees or have hired employees in the past, you know, that's one of the best ways to, you know, I've done that before where I've like, you know what, I, I've got this feeling that, you know, this person meets all the qualifications, but there was just something that was off, but I really needed somebody, so I kind of forced that answer and I just kind of hired them instead. Whereas if I had just stepped back and waited and allowed that right person to come to me, it would have been a much better situation. So oftentimes there is a trusting and allowing. So it is that kind of like hire slow, fire fast kind of mentality that's based on your intuition. Yeah. When you even did that in the sale of the business because your broker was trying to force the first offer that was made to go through and you kept telling me, I have an ick feeling. No, no, I person. can't give my company to that person. No. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. their financing fell through. So, yeah. you, you know, you ended up, your intuition was right on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. So it's good you didn't listen to yep. other people's. Yeah. <laughs> Voices. Yeah, and I think that the universe kind of helped with that one a little bit. Yeah. It just kind of unfolded because I was in a place of ah! <laughs> <laughs> You were. So how do we access our intuition, Danny? Oh this is how. You gotta let go of any sense of urgency, false sense of urgency. That was something that used to come up for me a lot, but you just gotta quiet the mind. You gotta create the space and you've gotta eliminate any distractions that are around you. So if you know that you've gotta be somewhere in five minutes, it's not gonna be a good time to do it. If you know that you've got um, you know, loud sounds going on in the background, it's not gonna be a good time to do it. So really create some space, create some time where you can actually sit down Take a few deep breaths and quiet the mind. Really, just clear the clutter, clear the clutter, <laughs> quiet the mind. And then once you do that, you can ask a question. And this is really, really beautiful. I, I will do this on a regular basis in the morning. I'll get up and I'll, and I'll ask the question. I'll calm myself and I'll say, okay, what's the most important thing that I need to do today? And then I'll wait. And then the answer will come to me. It'll be like a knowing. So you can ask the question, you can ask it out loud, you can ask it to yourself. Um, but the important thing is to ask the question of what is it that, that you're wanting to know? And then the last piece, which is really important, be able to distinguish that your body is what's giving you the answer. It's not your thinking mind. It's your, your physical body. So I'll experience in it. So his intuition is going again. So I will experience it like a knowing, like an experience, whereas you'll experience it a lot more like the prefrontal cortex will kind of start vibrating. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so there's something there. Yeah. And so basically, and the last part is really important too, because once you get that answer, so when I ask that question, okay, what is the most important thing for me to do today? I need to be willing to follow that. So I might have a to-do list that's like, I got to do this, 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 and this. And all of a sudden, my intuition says, go for a walk in nature. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to. I got so much to do. But if I And she lives in Seattle. So, yeah, you know, right? And the weather's not always. Oh, yeah. I do not. No, it's not. <laughs> 
But if I listen, then my day will unfold just magically. So definitely be willing to follow it. I'll call it taking inspired action because I used to have this thing about work where work felt really hard. But then when I started accessing my intuition, all of a sudden it became, ooh, I'm not working anymore. I'm actually taking inspired action, which is really cool. I think that's going to be all of our new tagline to yeah. take inspired I think, action. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, so ways that you can use your intuition, obviously, when you're making a decision about accepting a work project or a job, mm -hmm. um, we talked about hiring employees yeah. or determining if you're going to sell to someone, mm -hmm. like sell a company or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, dating choices. Oh, big one. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. I mean, how many of you guys have, have dated somebody and you just knew, oh, this is not where I'm supposed to be, right? Um, but you said, but you Day. Yeah. yeah maybe it's good sex maybe it's something yes. right there's something yeah and there is always something that we learn from our relationships but boy i tell you i've had situations where i've, I've stayed longer than um than my intuition was telling me to yeah 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 and we talked about choosing what to eat or drink right yeah. and how we exercise our bodies sometimes we feel like okay well everybody's going to hot yoga so we should go to hot yoga or we should get a pillow tone or um, we should do something that, you know, is whatever the in vogue thing is. And it turns out it's not best for us. And it feels kind of ick. Yeah. Like maybe you can't stand hot yoga because, you know, you're in Ayurvedic terms, you're a Pitta or something. Um, yeah. and kickboxing might be better yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. way more active. So mm -hmm. we, we should listen to how we feel best when we exercise and move ourselves. Yeah, and you can also use that while you're exercising by tuning into your body and your intuition. Maybe you're pushing yourself and your intuition tells you, you know what, I'm pushing myself too hard. I might be, you know, too sore tomorrow. And so you can use your intuition to back off and you can also use your intuition to go, you know what, I'm feeling really good. Maybe I can push myself just a little bit more. Yeah. 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 Um, we also can use our intuition in how we spend our free time, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of us spend free time by the way we relax, might be reading or maybe coming home and working more. <laughs> um yeah. or doing something like that when maybe there we our intuition's really telling us, hey, it's a good time to like binge Netflix or you know, it's a good time to read a new kind of book that you haven't read or take a class or experience mm -hmm. something new. Yeah, especially when we get caught up in our routines. You know, we get up, we go to work, we come home, we eat dinner, we watch TV, we go to bed. We get up and kind of do the same things over and over again. And um, I think sometimes that's when we can get into our unconscious mode where we're just kind of on autopilot. And oftentimes life just can not be fulfilling that way. And so using the intuition to say, well, gee, how do I want to spend my time? You know, what would be something that would be enjoyable for me? Yeah. 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 Um, or if you're a mom with kids, I mean, you may be so busy running a household that you're not actually taking time to ask yourself yeah. what you personally need or want, and you're just trying to fulfill everybody else's needs. So yeah. Yeah. that's really important too. Yeah. Um, also, we can use our, our intuitions in times of stress or change when we need to get past that logic and practicality mm -hmm. um, by asking ourselves, what, how really should we be dealing with the situation and what is the best um, way forward for us? Yeah. Um, and then you also can use your intuition when you really need to be honest with yourself about what you really want. And that's the example that you gave about like, do I sell my business? Do I not sell my business? Do I focus on teaching full time and yeah. doing other things. Yeah. Do I want to stay in this relationship? Do I not? Do I really want to hire this employee? Do I not? Do I really want to eat this bacon cheeseburger? Or, you know, I've sometimes used that because do. yeah, sometimes you do, because that's like my favorite treat is that bacon cheeseburger, but um, ice cream, any food, you can ask that question. And to be honest with yourself about what you really want, not just in that moment, but for the larger picture of your life. And that's just, yeah, when intuition comes through for those things, it can. And the beautiful thing about that is you don't have to, in a lot of ways, make decisions because the decisions come to you. So if you have a decision, that you're having a difficult time making, if you quiet the mind and you ask the question, oftentimes the answer will come to you. And so it's not like you have to make that decision. The decision is almost made for you. And I think that, you know, we hear the, the saying, you know, 
let go, go with the, go with the flow, you know, just mm -hmm. be easy. Right. And this is, I think one way where, but nobody knows how do I, how, how do I do that? How do I let go? And this is one way that you can do that. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so I love this quote from the actor Ding Ingrid Bergman, who says, you must train your intuition. You must trust the small voice inside you, which tells you exactly what to say and what to decide. Mm -hmm. um, because that really is the heart of all of this is just being at peace and taking a moment or five to breathe, relax, exhale, quiet your mind and trust yourself. Trust yourself. Do be true to you. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. yeah. The, at, the, at the base of all of it, you are the person that knows you the best and knows what's going on. Yeah. So I, we have, I saw a couple questions. How do you decide what's intuition and what's anxiety? Mm. Yes. Yeah, I think that if, if you're experiencing if you're experiencing anxiety, I think it's a good indication that you're getting caught up in the thinking mind. So what, what happens with anxiety or worry, it's something that we're chewing on with our mind, right? We think about something and we go, ooh, God, ooh, I'm having this experience or I'm afraid of this. And, and, and all of a sudden we start working ourselves up and our body gets this energy of anxiety. And when we, even when we begin to feel a little bit of an anxiety, it's the thought that triggers the chemicals that release into the body that create that emotion. And so the beautiful thing about tapping into your intuition and quieting your mind is you might feel the beginnings of that anxiety and go, okay, there it is. There's that feeling of anxiety. It's releasing those certain chemicals. I'm just going to let those chemicals move through me and out of me. And I'm going to quiet my mind. And I'm just going so to... So it's an acknowledgement of it, but not getting wrapped up in it. Yeah, we're stuck in it. Yes, yeah. When we follow that, that oh, I'm feeling a little anxious. Ooh, I'm anxious. Oh gosh. Oh no, I got to do that. I don't want to do that. I yeah, come up, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just kind of go down the rabbit hole, right? But mm -hmm. if you can catch it in the beginning, where you first start to feel it, and you go, oh, there it is. You take a deep breath and you let it out, and you let it flow through you, and you just allow it to move through you then what happens is then those chemicals are allowed to enter in your body. You can even use what's called oppositional thinking, or you can use creative visualization to um, imagine yourself being more at peace and not having anxiety. And what would that look like? Or in that, the work of Byron Katie, if you're familiar with her, um, is a good example of that because she asks you the question of like, well, okay, this is your thought. And it, could the opposite of that thought be true? Yeah. And what are the alternatives to this that could also be true? And it's expanding your viewpoint and your capacity to see that there are so many different variables for the same kind of thing that we're thinking yeah. um, that could also be true. Yeah, and that's a, that's a beautiful, I mean, just even asking that question, is this thought true? And how do I feel when I think this thought? And who would I be without this thought? You, it's an experience, right? So anything that you can do to get yourself out of your head and your thinking mind into the calmness and the peaceness of your physical body. And that just usually means taking time to quiet your mind and getting used to silence and peace. Yeah, good question. Are there any other, but, oh, there's another question. Hi, popping Hi, in Sam. here. Yeah, we did have some other questions come through. Somebody asked for any recommendations on great resources to learn more about intuition. Well, as we said at the beginning of this, um, I am working on a book and I talked to Danny this morning um, that she's going to co-author it with me. Yay! <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> so within the next few months, um, and I don't know if there's a way that we can uh, put a kind of trailer on this at some point that just says that yes the book's out to let people know whoever registered for this workshop um if they're interested um because i i expect that within the next be, be, probably before june it will it will be done and out so um so that's one one resource um any of the work of byron katie that we just mentioned could help you through this intuition 
Um, there's a, also a number uh, of, or can help you with your intuition. There's also a number of books on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, uh, Danny and I do both do private coaching. And so we, we can work with people on a, you know, per hour basis or anything else. If, if somebody wants actual one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. And there's, um, and there's always, you know, YouTube is a great resource oh, yeah. because when you Absolutely. look at like Deepak Chopra and you look at Eckhart Tolle, you know, anyone that's in that meditative space where, you know, they're, 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 they're focusing on being conscious and being aware, which typically involves quieting the mind and tapping into the deeper knowing of who we are beyond our thoughts. Um, that's really good as well. Um, and in regards to intuitive eating, if anyone is interested in intuitive eating, um, we're uh, creating workshops right now at finallyfreeworkshops.com where I'm training the trainers to go out and teach intuitive eating and empowerment. So there's kind of like this movement uh, to uh, evolve the way that we relate to food in our bodies. So um, they can go to that website as well if they're interested in intuitive eating. Well, and there's also um, on the women's wellness weekends.com website which is my company um, Danny did a four-hour workshop on emotional eating and intuitive eating that we recorded um, for our company mm -hmm. and there it's $29 um, and you can actually buy the whole four hours for the $29 and watch it if you want them mm -hmm. if you yeah. need like really in-depth information about that perfect um, we had an anonymous attendee ask, can you provide any examples of inspiring physical spaces that are helpful for creating a situation where you can access intuition? For context, I have a home that is loud with two energetic dogs, a new baby, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> I, I have, no, I, I can't relate to that at all. So <laughs> the <laughs> Leaf blower outside or UPS truck, he's going crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so you, it's kind of crazy because e even if you have an energetic household, right, you can still access peace within yourself um, if you look for it. But you can also find quiet corners maybe in your backyard mm -hmm. um, and, or in a closet. I have been known to go into my closet to meditate if I need some space away. And even though my closet, Marie Kondo oh. would, have a fit if she saw my closet i tell you because it's yeah. pretty cramped yeah um, but it that's my like little quiet space or i've also been known to take conference calls to try to get away from nacho or if i've been on radio shows and he's been crazy i've done them in the bathroom um because you can actually <laughs> shut the door and be by yourself um one of so, the things that I'll do is I'll go into my car. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, you yeah. do that a lot. Yeah. Oh, I love getting into my car because, and my intuition sometimes will tell me that I need to scream and I need to scream loud. And so I will go into my car like, oh, ah! and it's awesome because you can release those feelings instead of like tampering it down. And it's also a great place to meditate as well. And I will also Just add. Just don't do it while driving. Yes, no, 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 no. Um, and I will add to what you were saying is that if there, there is a place where you can get, if you're expanding your conscious awareness, that there can be chaos going around you and you can still sense a quietness or a stillness beyond it. But it takes practice and it really takes kind of tapping into that Zen part of ourselves that can kind of maintain the calm amongst the chaos. But in the beginning, I would definitely say, yeah, just take a 10 minute break, go out to the car if you can, just you know, say, okay, break time, take that time. That's really, really important, yeah. So that's good that they you know, acknowledge that. It's funny that you mentioned that in the chaos because one of my most favorite places in the world to be is in a really busy airport. And people think I'm nuts, but I find that an airport to be one of the most zen places in the world. Because I can sit in the chair and, you know, as long as there's enough chairs, LAX, there's not enough, always, but I can sit in the chair and, you know, stare off and not see, but stare off into some area and just center myself and focus in all that chaos, but just feel kind of the vibration of life all around me at the same yeah. time. Yeah, or, or even... It's, it's almost like connecting with the chaos from a beautiful perspective. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes when I'm in airports or when I'm, uh, I mean, I will literally look around and just go, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> there's, there's, there is, there's something that can be really cool about it. Great. And it looks like we have one more question. 
This person is saying, I live in India where we are taught to put society, family, others before ourselves. This puts self dreams and happiness at the backside. How do I juggle between my self interests without being harsh or harmful to others? Yeah, there's so many people that can relate to that. I mean, we're taught that here in the United States. I remember when I was a little girl, you know, my mom told me, you know, go play with Sally. And I didn't want to play with Sally, but I had to put Sally before me. And, you know, with, you know, um, you know, I, I don't want to do this, but I had to do it. I didn't want to eat. I wasn't hungry, but then I had to eat anyway because it was dinner. So there's so many people that can relate to that. And the only thing that I can say is that start small with baby steps and know that what you think other people will think. So if you begin to self-express, because that's kind of what you're talking about, is I've been trained to do all of these things for other people. And if I stop doing that, then I might be viewed as being the selfish person. And when you can move beyond that and take a small step and do something anyway, so start small. And then what you'll do is you'll look around and you'll go, okay, okay, what's going to happen? Yeah. And you'll notice that nothing happened. And then all of a sudden you can take another small step. And then you'll look around and you'll go, okay, what's going to happen? And you'll find nothing happened. Oftentimes, the stories we create are in our own heads. And people who we think won't support us will actually support us. So start taking baby steps. Do it. You'll discover that it's not the big deal that you think that it is. And then take joy in the expression of it. And you'll find that most people will begin to relate to you much better because you're operating from your own unique perspective as opposed to navigating the world based upon society and what everybody else wants you to do, what you think everybody else wants you to do. Yeah, authenticity oh, yeah. is a, it's key. Yeah, yeah, Great. I get that, that's so common, yeah. Yeah, I, I, we hear that all the time, so you're not alone in that situation. Yeah. Well, thank you both so, so much. If anybody has any questions that they kept to themselves or that they didn't get answered, I've sent out a link in the chat where you can join Jill's Fairy God Boss group. Leave questions for her there. We'll also include the link in the email that is sent out with the recording, as well as links to both of their websites. So everything is right there for you to access. Thank, thank you so much for everybody joining. Just popped up. Oh, did it? Yeah, do we have time for that one? We have just a minute. Oh, a great resource is Awakening Intuition by Dr. Mona Lisa Schultz. Yay! Medical doctor and intuitive. And yeah. thank you, whoever put that up, thank you very much for recommending a woman author because I get tired <laughs> of seeing all the male authors that get recommended, so. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. Um, so thank you again, Jill and Danny. It was really a pleasure having you here today. Thanks, um, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you, Samantha. And thanks to everybody for joining in. We'll catch you next time. Hey, bye. 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 bye.